8.2, proving triangle, triangle similarity by angle, angle, AA. What's the difference between congruent figures and similar figures? Give an example of each. So if we wanna make congruent figures, that means that all their sides and all their angles are exactly the same. So I would draw two exactly the same triangles. I would do my best to draw them exactly. Oh, I did not do very good. But I would do my best to draw them exactly the same size. Now, similar figures mean that they're the same shape, but one is either larger or smaller. So if I had that triangle and that triangle, they're the same shape. They've got two congruent angles but they are not the same size. One is dilated or reduced depending on which direction you go. So congruent is exactly the same. Similar is the same shape, but not the same size. When we're working with similarity, that's what we're working with today, similarity and the new symbol, if you haven't noticed yet, similarity looks like this. Just one squiggle line for similarity. Congruent is a squiggle line with an equal sign underneath. The difference being that congruent figures are exactly the same size. They're equal. Whereas similarity, they're just similar to each other. They're the same shape, but not the same size. When we're doing similarity work, we're going to be setting up a lot of what's called proportions and solving. So there's a couple different ways that you can solve them, and this is just a review. So one way to solve it is to use what's called cross multiplication. So you would do x times six or six x and two times nine equals 18. And then you've, because you had a fraction equal to a fraction, now you've got just a regular equation divide by six and x equals three. Same thing here, but um, just so that you know, you can reduce fractions before you solve the equation. So if you notice eight over 14, both of those divide by two. So you could do four over seven instead, and it makes your math slightly easier. So two X times seven is 14 X. Four times three is 12, cross multiplying. And then divide by 14, and that's not a nice number, so we'll just reduce that. 6 over 7. You try this one. Try it either method you want. You can reduce or you can just cross multiply. I'll just cross multiply. 6x equals 36. Divide by 6. And x equals 6. Even if you reduce, you should still get x equals a 6. So the similarity uh, definition or the similarity theorem we're learning today is if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the triangles are similar. That's key. And something to note is that if you have two angles similar to each other, that's going to uh, conclude, it's called the third angle theorem, it's going to conclude that that third angle is also congruent to each other. So you're looking for three congruent angles to say that two triangles are similar because all three really are going to need to be congruent. So let's try it on on these two problems. Determine whether the triangles are similar. If they are, write a similarity statement. Explain your reasoning. So these look similar to each other. They're both right triangles, at least. I can see that but they're giving me two different angles. They're giving me this acute angle 26 and this light, slightly larger acute angle 64. So the question is what is angle E and what is angle K? Because if those match the opposite triangle, then these are similar. So 90 plus 26 is 116. 180 minus 116 because of the triangle sum theorem is 64. So that means that angle E is 64 degrees. Now let's go the other way. 90 plus 64 is 154. 180 minus 154 is 26. Yay. So that means that angle K is 26 degrees. So do these two triangles have three angles that are congruent? Yes. So these are similar. So 
triangle, C, D, E, is similar, use the similar symbol, to triangle K, G, H. That means that their side lengths and angles, their angles are equal and their side lengths are proportionate. They're the same shape, but not the same size. All right, let's try the second one. 21 and 99, 21 and 61. So the question is, does angle Z match angle S? We want to know if those are the same. So is angle S 99 um, or is angle Y 61? So let's check. So 21 plus 99 is 120. 180 minus 120 is 60 degrees. So angle Y is 60 degrees. How about the second one? 61 plus 21 is, um, I don't have that one calculated. Anyways, 61 plus 21 is not going to get us this final angle. Um, I'll calculate that in a second. Um, this angle is gonna be 98 degrees. I can see that because it's gonna be one less. See, is 60 and 61. Um, so these are not similar. I'll calculate. Oh, we'll worry about that. All right. So now we're going to start using our knowledge of similar angles to help us solve problems. So example number two, a flagpole casts a shadow that is 50 feet long. So if I draw right on this picture here, we're saying that this is 50 feet long. At the same, t at the same time, a woman standing nearby who is 5 feet 4 inches tall casts a shadow that is 40 inches long. How tall is the flag? Oh, and the woman is five feet, four inches. Tall. And then we wanna know how tall is the flagpole. Now, the key to this problem is first recognizing that each of these figures are standing at 90 degree angles from the ground. We're going to assume that the ground is flat and that the, they're standing at 90 degree angles. The other reason that this problem can work is because we've got the sun beating down on our, our problem here, and the sun creates shadows at the same angle. So because, that, because of that, we have two angles that are congruent, and we've got two similar triangles. This is what's called indirect measurement. We do use this in real life, especially if we want to measure something that is um, larger than the measuring tools that we have. So here's our two triangles. We've got this triangle, the smaller one. Um, see, I connected it up for the lady. And then we've got our larger one for our flagpole. And now let's label the parts we know again. So this is 50 feet. This is 40 inches. This is five feet, four inches. Let's fix that and make it all inches. So five feet is gonna be 12 feet, five times. So 12 times five to get us 60 inches and then 60 and four. So this is gonna be 64 inches. And then we wanna know how tall the flagpole is. So that's gonna be our missing value. That's gonna be our X. So now the cool part about this is that you don't need to convert these feet into inches because this entire figure about the flagpole is gonna be in feet. So when you set up your proportion, it's going to match. So we can say X feet compared to 64 inches is proportionate to 50 feet compared to 40 inches. And you could leave the, um, you can leave the um, units off. So x times 40 is 40x. 50 times 64 is 3,200. Divide by 40 and we get the flagpole to be 80 feet tall. All right, it said a child, a child who's, standing, who's 58 inches tall is standing next to the woman in example two. How long is the child shadow? So we've got an even smaller kid who's 58 inches and we're missing his shadow. Same woman picture, this, so this, this guy right here, the smaller one, so we've got 64 by 40.
And now we just set up our proportion and solve. So x compared to 40 as 58 is compared to 64. You could do that differently. You could do x is to 58 as 40 is to 64. You have choice. x times 64 is 64x. 58 times 40 is 2320. Divided by 64 is 36.25 inches. So 36 inches and a quarter. All right, and our last one, the diagram shows a triangular ramp leading up to the entrance of a building. How long in feet is the vertical support shown in blue? Yours is not in blue, but it's this guy right here. So how tall is that vertical support? So this picture has two triangles in it. We've got this smaller one that I know has that length of six on it, but then we also have this big one. And we know that they share two angles because they share this um, really small acute angle and they both share a 90 degrees. So we know they're similar to each other. So let's do the smaller triangle first. So the vertical support compared to six, that's the small triangle. And then that's compared to the big triangle, two is to 24. Cross multiply, x times 24 is 24x, two times six is 12. Divide by 24, and 12 over 24 is one half, 0 0.5 feet. Thank you.